was for 60 years of show business. And the love that went out from the performers who performed for Sammy, the singers, the dancers, they, and some people reminisce. And I said, Sammy, did you feel that love? Do you now believe that these people love you very, very much? And he said, yeah. Tonight's show is dedicated to the memory of Sammy Davis, Jr. Tonight, the United Negro College Fund celebrates Sammy Davis, Jr.'s 60th anniversary in show business. Starring some of Sammy's friends, Debbie Allen, Anita Baker, and Carol, Mel Carter, Bill Cosby, Tony Danza, Clint Eastwood, Lola Falana, Ella Fitzgerald, Goldie Hawn, Gregory Hines, Whitney Houston, Bob Hope, Reverend Jesse Jackson, Michael Jackson, Irvin Magic Johnson, Quincy Jones, Shirley MacLaine, Dean Martin, Gregory Peck, Richard Pryor, Frank Sinatra, Mike Tyson, Dion Warwick, Stevie Wonder, and your host for this evening, Eddie Murphy. Thank you. Tonight, the United Negro College Fund is honoring a very special man on his 60th anniversary in show business. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor, Mr. Sammy Davis, Jr. on the face of the earth who doesn't know who this man is and doesn't know why we're honoring him tonight, perhaps this will uh, refresh your memory. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong Whether I find a place in this world or never belong I gotta be me I gotta be me The dream that I see Makes me what I am That far away prize A world of success Is waiting for me If I need the call Somebody else If I'm not right for me I gotta be free I've gotta be free Daring to try To do it or die I've gotta be me I'll go it alone That's how it must be I can't be right for somebody else if I'm not right for 
Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Sinatra. Thank you for that nice reception, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to be here to join in this wonderful celebration for my little friend, who's the best friend I ever had. 60 years. That's a lot of bourbon under the bridge, baby, I tell you that. And I knew that you would amount to something, but I didn't feel that you were going to amount to everything. And he did it all. He really did. Anyway, people are going to say that, uh, they're going to say a lot of nice things about you tonight, Sam. A lot of wonderful adjectives, so that uh, I want to get my licks in before they come out here. And I say, here's to you. Sam, you know I love you. I can't say it any more than that. You're my brother. And you're the greatest. It seems we stood and we talked like this once before. We looked at each other in the same way then. I can't remember where or when The clothes you're wearing are the clothes that you wore The smile you're smiling, you were smiling then I can't remember where or when Some things that happen for the first time yeah, They all seem to be happening once again And so it seems we have met once before And then we laughed a lot before also loved a lot before but who knows who knows where good band good band some things that happen for the first time they all seem to be happening once again And so it seems we have met once before And then we laughed a lot before Also loved a lot before But who knows Thank you. Very kind. Thank you very much. You want to go on a road with me? Sammy Davis Jr.'s 60th anniversary celebration. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. The good time, great taste of McDonald's.
AT&T, the right choice. And Chrysler Corporation and the Chrysler Motors Black Dealers Association. Tonight is a celebration. We're talking about a person who has spent 60 years entertaining the public. Now, let's put that into perspective. 60 years ago, Herbert Hoover was a president, and Babe Ruth was a sultan of SWAT. And, <laughs> and the country was in the middle of a Great Depression. Samuel was in a Great Depression of his own. Uh, he was four, and he wasn't a star yet. <laughs> In 1929, Sammy made his first film with the great Ethel Waters called Rufus Jones for President. Back then, the idea of a black man in the White House was somewhat remote. Booker T. Washington had slept in the White House in 1917 at the invitation of President Wilson. The next black man to sleep in the White House was Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> yes, he did. And it wasn't during a Perry Como concert. It was at the invitation of the President of the United States. And Sammy slept good, too, did you, Sammy? <laughs> Had a deep, to all of that was sleep. And then you, you slept in Abraham Lincoln's bed, didn't you? <laughs> now, even though he's been in the show business for 60 years, Sammy's always stayed one step ahead of what's happened. Sammy was hip when the rest of the world was hep. And he was bad before bad was, you know, good. And, and when everybody else was getting down, Sammy was getting up. <laughs> so, <laughs> I tell you, he slept very well there. No, Sammy's always had an eye for talent. And no pun intended. And here's a talent he's had an eye for. Hey, come on. Hey, stop. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Stop that. Here's a talent he has an eye, he's had an eye for for a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Miss Whitney Houston. Thank you. Mr. Davis, I'd like to do a song that I have sung many times all over the world. The lyrics mean a great deal to me, but on this occasion, they seem even more appropriate. Each day I live, I want to be a day to give the best of me. I'm only one, but not a my finest day is yet unknown I broke my heart for every gain To taste the sweet, oh I face the pain I rise and fall, yet through it all This much remains
214 area code. When Sammy started out 60 years ago, there was no television and no video cassettes. Talking pictures had just come to the movies, and it took four days to get from New York to California. And Zsa, Zsa was only on her second marriage at that time. <laughs> now, we, <laughs> we now have video cassettes and audio tapes and a means of recording history so that we can look back on great careers like Sammy Davis Jr.'s and see what it, what it was that made a man a phenomenon that he is. And let's look at some of this stuff. I didn't know about the show business a lot of that. I was just out with my family. I didn't learn about I didn't learn about show business until, uh, oh, I'd say, until I was about six or seven, that I was in a business. I thought it was just fun. So I started when I was three. I won my amateur contest. And uh, right after that, my dad and Will Maston put me in the act singing, I'll be glad when you're dead, you rascal, you. <laughs> school. I never went to any kind of school at all. We stayed at the black hotels, ate in the black restaurants, uh, socialized with the, the other blacks within that community because it was part of belonging and feeling comfortable and also part of the legal structure. But then I went into the army. I was 17 at the time. I was in the first integrated group of infantrymen and they had never seen a black man do Jimmy Cagney or Jimmy Stewart or any of the popular guys. So I started doing it in the army when I got with this integrated group. The white guys would laugh and the black guys would look at me like this. <laughs> when I got out of the army, the first night we were working at a place called Shep's Playhouse. At the opening night, I step up and I say, thank you very much, it's nice to be out of the army. I got something that my dad and uncle don't know that I can do. We talked about it, but I never got a chance to do it for them. I'm gonna do it for you nice folks tonight. I got up to the microphone and I said, how about Jimmy Stewart? You know, and I, while, while Jay was, uh, I'd really like to say that it really is a pleasure to be back among my, my own folk. And while they went, Rah! we got off the stage, people were standing. We got into the dressing room. My father said, if you ever do that again, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> but he did do it again. And as he got bolder and better, his reputation as a world-class entertainer continued to increase. Surely the gods were smiling on him until one night, driving from Las Vegas to Los Angeles, the smiles vanished. In a flaming automobile accident, Sammy lost an eye. Judy, 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 all young they did for your love and your kids. But with his flair for theatrical, he converted his misfortune into a stylish prop. He wore the patch for almost a year until a trusted friend convinced him to get rid of it forever. The friend was Frank Sinatra. Frank made Sammy part of his extended family, which included Dean Martin, Joey Bishop, and Peter Lawford. And together, the Rat Pack gave performances in Las Vegas that are talked about to this day. We are also delighted to have in our audience the brightest man in the political world in this country or any other country today, Senator John Kennedy from the great state of Massachusetts. Uh -huh. Yeah, Jack. You Follow that, rat, Joey. You son of a gun, you got the Jewish vote. I knew that, but I couldn't say it. What was his last name again? Their success only added to Sammy's solo career. If I get a hit record or I get a good movie, that's gravy. My main suit is concerts, nightclubs, going on around the world, entertaining, being a variety artist. That's what I am. I knew a man who dangles any dance for you. In worn out shoes, silver hair, ragged shirt, and baggy pants. Bojang is a special because I hated the song, because I was afraid to do it, because that's my fear that I'll wind up like Bojangles. 
He could jump so high Man, he could jump real high And then he'd lightly Touch down When I do that number, some nights I get so hung up in it One night in Vegas, I said, oh my God well, I was That's that's me. I'm projected. That's how I'll be at when I'm 70 years old, man. I'll still be working. I'll be working little joints. And I'll talk about what I used to be. And that'll be the end of it. Talk to life. Talk to life. Laughed. Slapped his leg a step. Said I dance now with every chance. Hockey uh, tops for my drinks and chips. But what is the time I spend behind the county bars? You see, son, I, I drink some bit. That man, that that culmination of different black performers, minstrels that I've known. Performers who got hooked on junk, who got wiped out by alcohol, got wiped out by a changing of times. I've seen them disappear, great dancers. That's Mr. Bojangles. Call me Mr. Bojangles. Mr. Bojangles, I come back and dance. can't please everybody you know but you please the majority and don't ever let them say see i didn't like the performance that doesn't mean everybody's gonna like what you're doing but at least they'll be able to say he performed for me man he gave his all damn that man The anniversary celebration will continue in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Clint Eastwood. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here tonight to honor a great entertainer and a great friend. When I was running for mayor in Carmel, Sammy offered to come all the way up there and hug my opponent. <laughs> There are, many other, there are many other things about Sammy Davis that are not common knowledge. And at one point, Sammy was a world-class quick-draw artist. When I was trying to make something of myself in spaghetti westerns, Sammy was at home practicing the art of the quick-draw. He said if they ever start making chitlin' westerns, he was going to be ready. <laughs> so as everything Sammy does, he went all out. He got himself the best equipment. A silver mother-of-pearl handle long barrel Colt pistols hand tool leather and uh, a Gucci uh, holster, real silver bullets. And here's an excerpt from a BBC special done in the 60s. And this will give you an idea why you should never mess with this guy in a shootout. As I walked down in the streets of Laredo, as I walked down in Laredo, one day I spied a young cowboy wrapped up in white rain. <laughs> Shucks, I wouldn't put it on unless I was good at it. <laughs> you see, single action means like, unless you have the modern revolver, they can fire this way. 
by just pressing the trigger. With the old-fashioned Western gun, you had to cock the gun first and then fire. So that, in essence, when you go for the fast draw, the gun is actually cocked while it's in the holster, like so. See, it's cocked here. You pull out and then fire. Of course, you must be careful that when you do this, you don't do that. Or you'll find out immediately why Chester walks with a limp. You see. Sammy is one of those few stars who are recognized by just one name. Sammy, Frank, Liza, Dean, Arsenio. <laughs> and here's another one, Goldie, Goldie Hawn. Thank you. When I was first starting out in show business, hmm, I was, oops. <laughs> What's this? I was living in New York and I was a dancer and I auditioned for everything that came along. I even auditioned for Golden Boy, but I didn't get it. <laughs> That's okay. I did meet a choreographer, however, and one day he gave me a call and he told me that Sammy was throwing a big party at the Rainbow Room, and he was looking for go-go dancers. And that, well, to liven things up if I would like to do that. So I said, well, yeah, I'd love to do that. So I called my girlfriend, and I got all dressed up in my little nothings and fringe things, and put on my makeup, and I went to this great party. Now, I was up on this little platform, and very little, <laughs> and the music went nonstop, and I don't think that I ever danced so hard before or since and at the end of the evening mr davis himself came up to me and he thanked me personally with all these other people around for being so good and working so hard and that no one had ever said that to me before then and i just went home i felt like a million bucks and years later i was doing laughing <laughs> And Sammy was a guest on the show, and at rehearsal he walked over, and I thought to myself, is he going to remember me? And he said, I remember you. You're that girl who danced at my party at the Rainbow Room. And you were terrific. And, well, Sammy, I don't know how many hundreds of times you've made people feel special in your lifetime, but you can put me down for two. something about you and I, well, I'm reminded about us when I think of this poem that I learned about children. And I think these kids are a little bit like you and me. It goes like this. Here's to the kids who are different. The kids who don't always get A's. The kids who have ears twice the size of their peers. And noses that go on for days. Here's to the kids who are different. The kids they call crazy and dumb. The kids who aren't cute and don't give a hoot. Who dance to a different drum. Here's to the kids who are different. The kids with a mischievous streak. For when they have grown, as history's shown, it's their difference that makes them unique. You the sad eyes don't be discouraged though I realize it's hard to take courage in a world full of people you can lose sight of it all and the darkness inside you makes you feel so small but I see your true colors yeah 
Ladies and gentlemen, the heavyweight champion of the world, Mr. Mike Tyson. Ooh. Oh, I do. Okay. <laughs> All right, stay tuned for more of the Sammy Davis Jr. tribute, honoring the one heavyweight I would never dare step into the ring with. Sammy, you're a true undefeated champ. Oh, wait. Uh, I think Mike can do it a little better than that, Mike. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to read this. This may be disastrous. Okay. Stay tuned for more of the Sammy Davis Jr. tribute, honoring the one heavyweight I would never dare step into the ring with. Sammy, you are truly the undefeated champion. The producers of the show, the producers of the show was hoping you'd have a little more feeling of more Mike, you know, a little bit more Mike Tyson, you know, more Mike Tysonisms, like, like. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Sammy and I would like. I want, I would like to uh, sing a song, you guys, for. Uh, Hey, buddy, would you mind the cigar? I'm about to sing. Thank you very kind. Uh, uh, no, nah, it couldn't be. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Bill Cosby. Thank you. Um, I have known uh, Sammy Davis Jr. for 30 years. Uh, you get to know a person pretty well over 30 years. You know how some people remind you of certain animals. <laughs> uh, for instance, um, you say, well, this guy is sly as a fox, this one is strong as an ox, stubborn as a mule. Well, Sammy to me has always been a turtle. <laughs> no, I'm not talking that he's slow or that he can pull his head in and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, a turtle carries his house with him wherever he goes. And that's what Sammy does when, when he's on the road. We play a club together. I show up with a suitcase, suit, sweater, you know, and borrow a chair, microphone. I'm in business. Sammy arrives with, I mean, there's trunks. Uh, like a herd of elephants. It looks like a safari is, is coming. <laughs> Bell captains double the staff. Trucks pull up to the hotel, and there's just stacks and stacks of matched luggage. Now, each piece of luggage is essential to this man's survival on Earth. Nothing extraneous or frivolous, essential, so he says. 
Man has 60 pairs of shiny shoes, slippers, boots. <laughs> suits for every occasion, little suits, little teeny silk, little small pieces of sequins, you know, coordinated ties, handkerchiefs, socks, belts, and the smallest underwear. So, you know, you can have like earrings. Framed photographs of every person he ever met. Enough cologne, sprays, makeup, hair preparations, creams and ointments to keep him looking and smelling good until his next bath. <laughs> a thousand pounds of camera equipment for a man with one eye. Now, when all this gear finally gets in gear and the dressing room is set up, it's like a home. It's time to go out on stage. And whenever we work together, Sammy follows me. And, I mean, I, I do well. Because I know he's going to be out there after I do well for six or seven hours entertaining people just to top me. <laughs> the second show, I'll do well. And he'll come out and do another six or seven hours. So all told, Sammy may end up spending a total of maybe a minute and 20 seconds in the dressing room. He took 47 hours to set up like home. Sammy will say to you, look, I've been doing it for 60 years, so who am I to tell you what to do? I just want you to know that I do this because this is my home, man, and gosh, wow, I'm there, and you're here, Bill, and this is it. But I just wanted to tell you, Sam, you keep doing what you're doing for another 60 years, and I'll keep working in front of you for another 60. That way, I'm sure I'll be working. God bless. Good night. Now, when the Will Maston Trio with Sammy Davis Jr. used to play at the Apollo Theater, in Harlem, a young man would sit in the balcony, man. He would sit with his brother and his father. <laughs> now, they will also enact, and the young man watched and he studied and he learned and he watched and danced. And the trio's name, name, was Heinz, Heinz, and Dad. The young man's name was Gregory Heinz, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gregory Heinz. Sammy Davis Jr. So when I was a child, when I was a young boy and I was 10 years old, and I would hear that name, or I would see your name, or somebody would, uh, somebody would talk about you, I would just get so excited and I would just, I, it's hard to put into words, it's hard to say it, but I just idolized you. I idolized you. And, and as I grew up, as I grew and our lives passed, uh, I, I, I grew in that too. And, and, and so now I just, I feel so much love for you that, uh, 
I'm going to try to dance it out for you. Save it for the end. I have a very weak finish.
Mr. Schumann. anniversary celebration will continue in a moment. What's the plans for the future? I plan to spend my money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to fool around saving and getting old. I'm going to spend my money, then die. <laughs> There's no need to be alive and broke after you had money. <laughs> Put your tongue in. <laughs> I love this man. <laughs> and I mean it. And I want everybody in the world to know that. Ladies and gentlemen. They know it now, Sammy. You can let go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Pryor. Thank you. This is a nice evening, huh? This is really nice. <laughs> Sammy, I'm, I'm impressed. I really am, man. There's 5,000 people out here, some who paid $500 a piece just to sit out here and watch you laugh. <laughs> you know, that's great. And I'm just real happy to be here, to be a part of it. And I saw all these wonderful people. And Sammy, they're all here to tell you how much they love you and how wonderful they think you are. I just don't know what to say, you know? I should know, but I don't. You know how stuff is in your head and then you say, oh my God, I forgot it. And they asked me to look at the teleprompter. I wear glasses. I'm looking at the teleprompter. I know it's real big and loud, screaming the words at me. I'm looking at it, but I can't see it. <laughs> it is just a blur. I mean, this is great. You, yeah, but backstage, you got a billion dollars worth of talent. Backstage, I was backstage trying to see who the stars were looking at. <laughs> I stepped on Bill Cosby's foot. And Bill got them big feet, you know? <laughs> yeah, I bumped Michael Jackson. <laughs> I did. 
And I, I stepped over Dean Warden. Excuse me, Dean. And I kissed Jesse's ring. <laughs> you know, it was kind of like it was a boat. Jesse. Mm -hmm. And now I stand here before an audience trying to think of the line that gets me off. Oh, please, God. Let me remember, please. Well, they all were standing backstage to look at this person that I'm going to introduce. And I'm real happy to introduce him. Ladies and gentlemen, Sammy Davis, Mr. Gregory Peck. Sammy Davis had never appeared in a single film, a play, or a TV production, he'd still be considered a fine actor. Not only for the mood he creates when he sings a song, or for his commanding presence when he dances, but for the way he's played that larger-than-life character called Sammy Davis, Jr., making up the script as he went along. He's endured more agony, more ecstasy, more twist of the plot, and more joy than Macbeth, Job, and Pee Wee Herman combined. <laughs> but when called upon to sublimate his own extravagant personality, to portray a character created from a writer's imagination, he brings to the part the ring of truth, which is the hallmark of great acting. So let's take a look now at Sammy Davis, the actor. Tonight we tell a special story about two persons, one an orphan of war, the other an orphan by choice. They meet, and this is that story. Our star, and this is his first dramatic role, is Sammy Davis Jr. in Auf Wiedersehen. Wow. He said, man, the most displaced little old person I ever did see. Goodbye, ma'am. Papa! I'm not your papa! Joey, don't you know I'm not your papa? Look, I, I don't need you, kid. I, I don't need you, Joey. I'm in the army and I don't need you. That's wrong, Joey. I need you. <laughs> Joey, I'll be back for you. I just I'll be back. Joey, look at me. I love you, Joey, and I'll be back for you. Three decades later, Sam is still going strong as he proved in his latest film, Tap. I have tried. Darling, I swear to you, I have tried. And I just can't pull it off. I can't make it work. I go in there and play cards with the guys. Tried gardening upstairs. But I ain't good at none of them damn things. I'm only good at one thing. I'm a tap dancer. And Amy, I'm proud of that. Now. During that 30-year span, Sammy, the song and dance man, performed all over the world and still found time to do 23 films. He was part of a gang that stole from the rich and gave to the poor in Robin and the Seven Hoods. Wait a minute, did you hear him say just a second? That's it, don't get smart, you understand? Hey, hey, what is that? I saw it in the movie. Uh, shut up. How far do you expect to go with the Robin Hood? Sammy continued his scene-stealing ways with his buddies in a series of films like Ocean's Eleven and Sergeant Three, and on his own in such highly acclaimed roles as Sport and Life in Porgy and Bess, and the hippie preacher in Sweet Charity. He donned the clerical collar for a cross-country sprint in Cannonball Run and put on judicial robes for a romp on television that became a national sensation. <laughs> this judge's gonna start a war on crime and everybody today is gonna get some time. Here comes the judge. <laughs> Sammy has appeared in over a thousand television shows and has worked with all the major stars. 
but perhaps one of our most memorable moments was when Sammy and Archie Bunker met face to face. Archie Bunker. Oh, that ain't a bad toast, Barney. I can drink to that one myself. <laughs> I'm Barney Heffner. I live across the street the house of the new porch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not only the greatest entertainer in the world, but a man who proves that there's good and bad in all races. Right, right. I'll drink to that. <laughs> and to friendship. Ah, uh, you oh, hear that? that? Right, that's nice. To friendship, drink it out myself. Davis, this is an unexpected pleasure. Uh, pleasure. Thank you very much. Can I get a picture, oh, Mr. No, no, Davis? Come on, Munson, no pictures. Oh, no, this one is for me. Mr. Munson, would you stand over there? I want one picture taken with Archie Bunker, my friend, and me. You want me? Oh, yes. Now, on three, okay? One, two, three. <laughs> Sammy's best films was Porgy and Bess. It was almost as if he was born to play the part of sport and life. Although that classic American opera was written before Anita Baker was even born, it's, it's almost as if she was born to sing this score. Ladies and gentlemen, Anita Baker. Shirley MacLaine and President George Bush. We're the happiness boys. I'm Ernie. And I'm confused because I didn't see it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got one eye and it was looking the other way. <laughs> they say my feet are natural. Yeah. A size seven and a size eleven. <laughs> they tell me my feet are natural. <laughs> no, 
That's just perfect. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Hope. Thank you very much. I'm here tonight to talk about Sammy Davis, the saint. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> well, a saint he ain't. But let me tell you, Sammy Davis has been an angel to so many millions of people who have benefited from his benefits that he has given us over the years. There have been thousands of benefits. I mean, things like the Benefit for the Zsa Zsa Gabor Driving School Foundation. <laughs> so, Sammy has always lived by one motto. I never let my income interfere with my standard of living. <laughs> Sammy has thrown away so much money in his lifetime that he could qualify for his savings and loan bailout. He has the heart of a giant, the soul of a romantic, and enough drama in his life to fill a week's worth of Geraldo, believe me. <laughs> Sammy Davis is a singer, a dancer, an actor, an impressionist. Huh. He's done more in one life than Shirley MacLaine has done in 20. <laughs> He's amazing. He had a hip operation. Sammy's doctor told him he was getting too much weight on the hip. So Sammy took off five rings and a bracelet. Even with his bad hips, Sammy still dances up a storm. Believe me, who says Jews don't have rhythm? <laughs> Sammy's celebrating his 25th year in the Jewish faith, and he's still trying to find a place that sells kosher chitlins. <laughs> One person who couldn't be here tonight but wanted to be a part of this program is the President of the United States. Rather than risk losing my green card, I said I'd be happy to introduce him. The ladies and gentlemen, from the White House, President George Bush. Good evening. It's a pleasure to join you on this special occasion. As many of you know, I've been involved with the United Negro College Fund for over 40 years. And in that time, I've seen the remarkable work the UNCF has accomplished and the countless people they've touched. We could also say the same for tonight's guest of honor, Sammy Davis, Jr. Many years ago, Sammy was the first person to contribute money to all 42 of the United Negro College institutions. And since then, Sammy, you've continued to contribute in countless ways. And that's why it's only fitting that the proceeds from tonight's event are going to establish Sammy Davis, Jr. scholarships. Through your efforts, a lot of young people are going to have educational opportunities that might not otherwise have been available to them. Nothing says it better than the UNCF slogan, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Congratulations to the United Negro College Fund on this wonderful and inspirational event. And Sammy, for all your work, not only do you have the heartfelt thanks of your family and friends, but also of this president. Thank you, best of luck, and God bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley MacLaine. Thank you. Samala, it doesn't really seem that long ago that we first met but it was 34 years ago. You were 30, and I wasn't. <laughs> I had, I was about to begin my first picture with Dean and Frank, and they snuck me in to a very famous nightclub called Ciro's. They snuck me in because I was underage then. They said they had discovered this kid who was dancing and singing and performing in the middle of a trio. The two people on either side of you were terrific. 
But I could not believe my eyes and my ears. Never had so much come out of something so small for so long. <laughs> I thank you, Sam, for all you've taught me about live performing, about expressing yourself in so, so many ways, dancing, singing, acting, writing, about overcoming adversity, and about using your talent at every moment when someone else needs you. You are not the middle of the trio anymore. You are a great, glorious, soaring, sweeping symphony orchestra. If they could see you now, all those who knew you well, surrounded by this love and joy, Oh boy, they'd quell. They'd stand and cheer right here, as all of us do, and wish you health and wealth and happiness too. No one on earth can chase the blues and bring such fun even in outer space i've never seen it done you deserve this well-earned bow you're one in a million that's why sam we love you now Tune for Magic Johnson and Stevie Wonder. The 60th anniversary celebration will continue in a moment. I'm rehearsing down the hall, and I am such a fan of yours. I know it's your opening show, and I don't want to disturb you, but I, being a fan, I, I couldn't resist coming in and wishing you good luck on the new year. You know, I'm starting a new year. I want this to be the greatest year that I've ever had in television. Mm -hmm. So naturally, I want shows, I want a pattern after the best shows that I've done in the past. And as you say, you've been a fan of mine. I am. What, what show, what was the best show you think that I did this last year? Well, I didn't see any of your shows last year. <laughs> you didn't? No, I, I, I didn't see any. Well, you said you were a fan. I, mean, I am a fan, and I, I, I just can't watch you on television, Jack. You never watch me on television? I never watch you on television. You know the reason why? Now, let me explain. A fan I am of sure. But I want to remember you from the old days in vaudeville. The first time, for instance, my father and uncle took me to see what they call a real pro. They took me to see you, the greatest entertainer of all time. I sat in the theater and I watched the master at work. I really, and when you did the things you did, for instance, when you opened up that act of yours in vaudeville in the old days, and you sang that song, I'll never forget it. And then they nurse it. They rehearse it. And then they gave out. And the gave birth to the blues. Oh, they gave out the blues. When did I that old town man?
remember so well. I know it. I can, I can still see it. And then you went right to the drums. It was fantastic. I went to the drums. Please, please. They figured, well, you must be tired now, but you had more energy left, and that's when you went into your dance. I One, didn't... two, three, four. When did I ever? It was really something to see. <laughs> Sammy, I didn't do those things. I can't sing, I can't dance, I can't do imitations, I can't play the drums. You can't? No. Then I guess that's why I don't watch you on television. <laughs> Six foot nine inches tall. Our next, did some spit just shoot out my mouth? It looked like I said tall. I'm sorry. That six foot nine inches tall. I'm sorry if it did. <laughs> six foot nine inches tall. Our next guest doesn't have to look up to very many people, but there is one person he does have to look up to, and that person is only five foot six in heels. <laughs> the looky is Sammy Davis Jr., and the looker is Magic Man himself, Mr. Irvin Magic Johnson. I grew up in Lansing, Michigan, and I had the advantage of being able to go to grade school, high school, and college. Sammy Davis grew up in Harlem and didn't have that opportunity. Sammy never went to school. He couldn't read or write. As a matter of fact, when Sammy was 16 years old, working on the road in clubs and little theaters with his father and uncle, he still was basically illiterate. He did know, however, he was going to be a star. So he would practice signing his autograph in between shows backstage. <laughs> so he would practice writing different names to Bill, to Jack, to Mary. And sure enough, one day after the show, a busboy approached Sammy and said, Mr. Davis, could I have your autograph? Thrilled and excited and ready, he whipped out his pen and he said, sure you can have my autograph, my good man. And he said, who should I put it to? And the bus boy looked up at Sammy, and he must have been real short if he looked up at Sammy. <laughs> and he said, make it out to Raul. <laughs> and Sammy said, I'll get you later, pal. <laughs> Sammy now knows how to spell Raul and a lot of other things. So, Sammy, I like your autograph. You can make it out to Irvin Magic Jumps. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's E-A-R. <laughs> or you can just make it out to Raul if you want. Guess who's, guess who's coming out next?
great honor tonight to to be here in, in the presence of such a great man. And I feel particularly honored to be standing in front of all of you. And the biggest honor of all is being able to introduce this next man. Ladies and gentlemen, Stevie Wonder. Sammy, us all being here tonight is our way of saying to you how much we love you and how much you've been an inspiration to all of us. And yes, I can say and I hope I can speak in behalf of all of the other artists and performers, actors and actresses here tonight, that we, we hope that we can, in our careers, be as great and as giving as you have been in yours. There was a time in my life when a song that you did, uh, well, a few years ago, I listened to this song and I used to do it on the show a lot. And um, in fact, when I was going through the musical transition in my life and those were saying, well, by the time he gets 21, it won't be happening anymore. And I uh, said, well, you shouldn't move forward and do the kinds of music, kind of music that you wanted to do. Well, I felt that I had to do the things that I really felt in my heart. And because of this song, it inspired me to do exactly that. And you sang. Whether I'm right, whether I'm wrong, whether I find a place in this world or never, Belong. I've got to be me. I've got to be me. Daring to try to do it or die. I've got to be me. Daring to try to do it. things that he had done we would also do 
Coming up, Tony Danza, Reverend Jesse Jackson, Quincy Jones, and Michael Jackson. Your 60th anniversary celebration will continue in a moment. Precious few. Hold it! I would, it Hold it! What, what's the matter, sir? What, 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 I, don't, what? I don't believe what I just got through hearing. What are you doing, sir? Burl singing a ballad? Well, I don't understand what you mean. I can't believe that you're serious. I just don't believe it, Milton. I, I, I thought that I would do it because I thought it would be a change of pace in the show, you know? In a swinging review like this, Milton, look, I know you're the greatest comedian in the world. You're also a marvelous, serious actor. Well, thank you. But this is, this kind of a show demands what you invented. Really? Shtick, physical bits, all of the hokey visual things, you know, uh, slapstick, slapstick no. all of that. Uh, I, I don't want to put you down, Sammy, but all that's well and good, but slapstick, hokum comedy today, I think, uh, this day, it, it isn't funny anymore, Sammy. It's funny. You're putting me on. No, I mean not. It isn't funny Come anymore. Come on, Milton, I don't buy that. I heard you lecture on comedy yeah. at UCLA. And do you remember when you were telling the students about a Law and Hardy picture yeah. where Oliver Hardy got the biggest yuck in the world mm -hmm. because he did this <laughs> to Stan Laurel. Then he proceeded to do that. Then he gave it one of these. say that's not funny that's not funny excuse me a little. Right. you remember when you were talking about the keystone cops and you did the stand-in bit prior to that the makeup man came over to you i remember it very well and went makeup <laughs> Now, just be fair. You mean to tell me that's not funny? That's not funny. Wait a minute. Do you remember when you were talking of the Keystone Cops? If you were a Keystone Cop, right, and I was a guy with a seltzer water, you mean to tell me if I spritzed you like this... <laughs> That's not funny. Don't leave. <laughs> now, Milton, you mean to say if I took this pie and went like this? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Danza. <laughs> you. By the time Sammy was nine years old, he'd already been dancing professionally for five and a half years. And one day, Sammy said to his father, Hey, Dad, I can outdance you. And his father said, Oh, yeah? Oh, what makes you think so, Sammy? And Sammy said, well, because, Dad, you taught me everything I know. And Sammy Davis Sr. looked at his young son and he said, yeah, but Sam, I didn't teach you everything I know. 
Well, Sam, I don't know much. And I got to tell you, after watching you and Gregory dance, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure I want to do this anymore. But, but anyway, uh, we worked up a little routine, me and, and your friend Pat Rico, and I'd like to do it for you right now. And what the hell, I'm a white guy, so. Uh, gentlemen. That's kind, that's kind. Anyway, to mention another tap dance, whenever Sammy met Fred Astaire, Mr. Astaire, you're laughing now, huh? Mr. Astaire always greeted him by saying, hello there, tap dancer. And Sammy would always reply, not around you, I ain't. Around you, I'm a singer. And around you, I got a sitcom. You know, I should remember that. Well, thank you. Well, whenever Fred Astaire met Dean Martin, he would say, hello, Dean. And Dean would reply, oh, am I in town? <laughs> well, well, Dean's in town tonight, and here he is, Mr. Dean Martin. <laughs> right here. There you are, sir. Knock him down, Dean. That's your mark. Sammy, I can remember those great times we had together at the Sands back in the 60s. You, me, and what's his name? <laughs> remember all the fun we had making those movies together? Sergeants Three, Privates Nothing. Oceans Eleven, Gone with the Wind. We weren't in that. <laughs> Frankly, Sam, <laughs> I don't give a damn. <laughs> I, uh, I could go on with this trip down memory lane, but I think you'd be more interested in these wires that came in from all over the world. <laughs> Just made that up. They asked me to read uh, these because I have my own glasses and a lovely voice. <laughs> Here's one from uh, Hollywood. Dear Sammy, you have always been a class act, and I've patterned my career after you. Signed, Roseanne Barr. <laughs> from overseas, dear Mr. Davis, Please stay away from my daughter. Signed, Mother Teresa. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's signed, Teresa's mother. <laughs> and here's one from the royal family. Dear Sam, the kids join us in congratulating you on this great event. Signed, Debbie and Charlie Royal. Uh, would love to be with you tonight, but 
I have to be at the Sammy Davis 60th anniversary celebration. All best wishes, Dean Martin. <laughs> I better get out of here if I'm going to make that. I'd like to add one more little wire before I leave. Roses are red, carnations are pink. If I had your talent, I wouldn't have to drink. Can I do that? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Reverend Jesse Jackson. This is a tremendous moment in history, pregnant with so much hope tonight. Walls have been tumbling down in Poland, Hungary, Berlin, Namibia, New York, Virginia, people are crossing. People are crossing ancient boundaries of race and sex and religion to affirm the oneness of the human race. None of these walls fell down because of corrosion or inevitability, but because of the persistence of people who chipped away who risked their lives and careers even when their fellow men did not understand. Sammy Davis Jr. has been chipping away at that wall, breaking down barriers, seeking to find that spot on the compass in the affairs of human history where lions and lambs lie together. And neither would be afraid and they could study the war no more and beat their swords in the plowshares and their spears in the pruning hooks. To do so, Sammy, to play such a role requires perseverance of extraordinary character. To you, Sammy, suffering breeds character, and character breeds faith. And in the end, faith and hope will prevail. Dr. King and the host of heaven smiles upon you tonight. You've never let us down, and we love you so much. Keep hope alive. Love you.
Quincy Jones. I first met Mr. Sammy Davis Jr. when I was 14 years old, and since everybody's putting his business in the street, Sammy was 21, and that's exactly 42 years ago when he was working with his father and his uncle with the Will Maston Trio at the Washington Educational and Social Club. And he was very serious talent at this time, and he was well on his way to becoming a legend. And over the years, I've had the honor of playing for him, writing charts for him, conducting for him, fishing with him, which is pretty funny, and rooting for him. There's a cliche that goes, he's the best friend a song ever had. But in Sammy's case, it's really true. And tonight, some of Sammy's best friends are going to get together here tonight and do some of the songs that he brought to life during this beautiful career. And we're going to start with Miss Diane Carroll. Once in a lifetime, a man knows a moment, one wonderful moment, when fate takes his hand. And this is my moment, my once in a lifetime, when I can explore a new and exciting land. Oh, once in my lifetime, I feel like a giant. I saw like an eagle as though I had wings. And this is my moment. My destiny calls me. And though it may be just once in my lifetime, I'm gonna do great Gonna build a mountain, at least I hope I will. Gonna build a mountain, gonna build it high, yeah. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, only know I'm gonna try. Gonna build a daydream, a little hope. Gonna push that daydream. I'm after a 
I'll throw up my sorrow Begs me to borrow My share of laughter With you, I can learn to With you on a new day Who can I turn to If you turn away
Be smart, be clever, don't upset your car when he's so close. Be soft, be sweet, but be discreet. Don't go off your feet, he's too close for comfort. Too close, too close for comfort, please not again. such temptation one thing leads to another too late to run for cover he's much too close for comfort now be wise be smart behave my heart don't upset your car when he's so close be so of be sweet but be discreet celebration has been brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. Ladies and gentlemen, Sammy Davis Jr. by providing transportation is pleased to have played a part in this evening's tribute. Continental, working to give the best performance in the air to more than 100 cities around the world. And Hyatt Hotels and Resorts in the new Hyatt Regency in downtown Los Angeles by providing accommodations are proud to pay tribute to Sammy Davis Jr. Discover the magic of the Hyatt Touch at Hyatt in Los Angeles. This is Guy Gordon coming up next, a deal in the works tonight to get laid off Detroit crossing guards back on the job. We'll have the complete story. Deputy Chief James Bannon fighting to keep the controversial police jet 
and we'll take you to the nation's capital for a tribute to a Detroit legend. Those stories and more next on Action News Update. Watch the Weekend Report tonight on most of these ABC stations. This is ABC.